Welcome to another ADV China video, guys. Today we're talking about a pretty hot topic, and that is the kind of state of the real estate industry in China. You've all heard about Evergrande. Perhaps you've watched our podcast about it. Perhaps you've seen it in the news. Uh, the second largest real estate company in China is a construction company is currently basically going bankrupt and is causing all sorts of trouble. So we thought we'd go back through a couple of some of the videos we've done in the past. We're going to play in the background, talk about it, tell you some of our experiences that you probably haven't heard yet, and uh, just kind of talk about the whole real estate issue. So Winston and I were in China. Uh, this was filmed in 2018. This was 2018. Our, this particular one in the background, yeah. Yeah, around the time of, we're going to say the beginning of the end, and mm. there was a lot of tinfoil hat stuff going around because even even us, we were calling people out because they're like, "When is China's real estate market going to collapse? It's too hot. You can't be in a country that makes an average of ten thousand dollars per year, but people have to spend up to a million dollars for a tiny flat in a city. It doesn't sure. make, it actually doesn't make sense. Sure, it's not feasible." So we would go to places like this, and this is uh, one of the more higher end areas. This is like where you'd buy a very fancy, separate, detached villa. Yes. Um, I mean, just look China. at the state of it in the background. It was. This is three years old. Yeah, <clears> it's, at a the pa time. it's appalling. But you know what? It's actually quite common with these uh, uh, real estate things. They set this big, elaborate uh, facade up to make the sales. As soon as they've got all the investment, they just let it rot. Well, what I wanted to say was we yeah. were, I was kind of duped as well because everyone in my family, all my friends, they're all investing in real estate, Right. but they would invest in places that they hadn't even seen before, right? And this is a great example of that. This place was built three years prior to us filming this mm -hmm. and it had already degraded before anyone had moved in. Yeah. <clears throat> it's yeah. complete wasteland, right? And it gets, it succumbs to the elements because sure. we're in Southern China. Yeah. It happens, it's very right? humid mm -hmm. and the tropical kind of a climate. So these people buy these properties because traditionally mm -hmm. there's no other way, to, <coughs> excuse me, traditionally there's no other way to keep your money safe in China. Yeah. If you have a system that says capitalism is bad and they take away all your stuff or there's an emperor that says you're not allowed to own things or it doesn't matter the flavor of the week, what's being demonized by the Chinese government, property has always been a solid bet. Sure. So people invest in these things and they might not even be in the same province. Sure. Right? But when you go up close to these things, in these abandoned areas where there where people have invested in them but no one's moved in yet, you'll see that the building material will be a styrofoam. Yeah, just it will be cardboard, cardboard, in there. right? Mm. And that was indicative of what we saw as a huge, huge problem. And like I said, we were pretty speculative. We saw that the real yeah. estate market kept going up and up and up. And we we're like, hey, maybe there is no end. <clears throat> well, guess we what? In real life. The, the people in China, everybody believes that there's no way the property price can ever come down. Yeah. And that's why it's so dangerous because property prices have been increasing year over year, crazy, every single year, 10, 15, 20%. People have been getting huge returns. And so everybody who was kind of skeptical is like, oh, maybe it's a bit too expensive to buy. They see this and they're like, oh, crap, I'm missing out. If I don't buy, it's just going to mm. keep getting more and more. People keep buying into it and it's a sure thing. That's the problem is people think it's a sure thing. They've never seen otherwise in these past couple of decades. They've only ever seen the prices go up and they believe that they will never stop going up. And that's why it's such a dangerous bubble is because people will buy this property, make it, uh, you know, till it's about 15, 20, 30 percent more, sell it, use their profits to put down deposits on two more properties and so on and so forth and do a lot of speculation because it's infallible. It's never going to go down. And that's when problems end up happening. And you can see what's going on over here in the background. Just so how bad the quality is. Yeah. So this is considered like a ghost town. You know, you hear about the yeah. ghost towns all the time. The ghost yeah. towns are actually these entire cities set up for up to 100,000 people, some of these sure. areas. And what they are is they're supposed to have shops and their own school and their own everything. It's supposed to be this kind of self-sufficient little area. Yes. Where a lot, thousands and thousands of people can buy into. And then uh, China has this kind of really convenient um, self-sustaining thing. They don't People don't have to commute downtown for their job. Maybe sure. they can work there. And they, they end up like this. These huge nondescript buildings yeah. that are completely empty yep and you always hear about these ones in Ordos up in inner mongolia and stuff but when i saw them in every area every, really every province of china yeah every city has got like outlying little ghost towns these little yeah. um, investment things they're I, usually called xin chus like yeah, new areas new areas i actually lived in when i was living in buji remember i lived in that uh shenzhen yeah, yeah. what was that place? whatever it was called that particular place that was a very 
popular for investment properties because it was outside of the Shenzhen city, far enough that it was still cheap enough. Mm -hmm. So I lived in that apartment complex for about four years and I had to move every year. Once I had to move after six months because what would happen is you sign a contract to rent mm -hmm. and you, you, move, you move in and then the mm -hmm. landlord just, the price goes up a little bit and they just sell it immediately. And it was so frustrating because as a renter, you have no rights in China. So they would just kind of knock on the door and say, hey, you know, sorry, we sold the place. You're going to have to move out. And so it got so annoying. By the third time I'd moved, mm. I made the real estate agent sign like a legal document to say, I am here for my lease and no one is allowed inside the property. Because what would happen is people would come knocking on my door at 11, 12, midnight, okay? Bring in like the real estate agents would knock, bringing all their clients to come look at this property they wanted to buy, this apartment. And I'd be living there and they'd be waking me up at midnight every day of the week, literally every day of the week. And I just moved in or I'd been there for like three months or six months. So I got so pissed off. I made them sign this legal document. I'm not letting anyone inside. You're not going to come into my apartment until my lease is up. Anyway, they still tried. And I remember specifically, I, I stayed in this one apartment <clears throat> and it was terrible. The floors, it had like that fake wood linoleum, whatever you call it, you know, on the floors. But because there was water seepage through the walls, because the pipes weren't good. So there was actually big water stains on the walls and you could put your finger into the wall because it was that bad. <laughs> it was all plaster, you know. And then the floors were all bubbled up and rotten and mm -hmm. stuff. It was terrible. It was really badly, badly put to be together, right? Anyway, they kept trying to knock in to, to show people what it looked like and... I, put a, I actually put a copy of that letter from the real estate on my door saying you may not come in until my lease is up. But they still tried. And then they would try to like sneak a look in there. They would hang around outside my door. And when I went out to go throw out my rubbish or something like that, there'd be people waiting to like quickly glance inside the door. I was like, what the hell is wrong with these people, right? Anyway, the fact of the matter is it was quite hilarious because eventually they were like trying to look through that peephole. I put tape over that, you know, it was really, really stupid. Somebody ended up buying it without seeing it, okay? And I remember because on the day I moved out, they came in to finally look at this property they bought. And they were like, wait, what's all this wall damage and this floor damage? Too late. That's how ridiculous the property market is, that they would buy a freaking apartment without even seeing it, okay? And it was so bad quality and so terrible. But hey, that's it's all about like, grab now while you still can, you know? It's yeah. terrible. So let's see where it's going. Now, yeah. If you can see behind us, this is some. This is what the average China looks like. Yes, because you, you a lot of people get so duped by all the city yeah, the center fancy. CBD I mean, stuff, and that's still okay compared to what we've seen. That's oh like yeah, I mean this isn't even city. countryside. Yeah. 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 So anyway, you get these in, uh, investment properties, right? And mm. if you're going to speculate or make any money in China, you're going to be investing in property. But a friend of mine just told me that his area, which was one of those Xinchus, yeah, you can new areas. You can never, ever stop. It'll never stop. Yeah. You know, that's what you're told over and over again. It will never stop. It will keep going and going and going. Mm. So originally when he moved in there, it was about $800 per square meter. Right. Right. So let's say, let's do a quick math here. If you have $800 sure. per square meter for, let's say, a 200 square meter house, right? Yeah. It's $160,000 apartment. Yeah. Okay. This is not like a villa. This is just a little crappy just a apartment. tiny little apartment, you know. Um, I mean, well, 200 square meters isn't that small, but yeah. it's like in, it's barren. You don't get anything in it. It's sure. not like you're buying furniture and stuff. No, it's, it's got no floors. It's a concrete, concrete box. box. It's got the wires hanging out the walls and it'll have like the plumbing fixture, yes. not fixtures, just the pipes. Just the pipes. You have to put everything in. Yeah. Right. So it went up to, um, I believe it was supposed to, it was, it went up astronomically high because right. people are buying properties to invest, but a lot of these people aren't living. They're not living in no, them, no, no, no. Right. Unfortunately, what happened was it went all the way up and then it went all the way back down. And now it's at the same price it started at. And for a speculator, that's a huge problem, especially when the economy is going skyrocketing and you promise that it's high. Yeah. Because on the flip side of that, I have a, I know someone personally, right? Yeah. This is how fragile the system is. You'll buy a, a, an investment property and then all of a sudden the city will decide, oh, our new city center is actually not going to be here anymore. Mm. And it follows the property developers. So before this area of Huizhou where I used to live, was Jiangbei was the new city center. Right. Before it was in this place called Maidi, then it was in Jiangbei. Now Jiangbei is whatever. Yeah. So they abandoned this very new place, mm -hmm. all the new shops, all the new fancy new malls, all the restaurants, and they move it over to a new area. Yeah. And so all those properties go up. So the properties have gone from 5 to 10 to 20,000 RMB 
now in this new area. And mm -hmm. somebody I know said, oh, it's a perfect time to buy. And I said, 20,000 RMB per square meter in a third tier. So this is a not a main Chinese city. Pretty much, well, the footage you see in the background is, um, that's from nearby. From nearby. It's actually yeah. very nearby. It's in the same city. It's like a 10 minute drive from where you're talking about. Actually, this area yeah. that we're in right now, this is very good that we brought this up. This is that new area. Oh, it is that this new This is area. that new area. Yeah, this is where those nail houses were. Now, this is a nail house behind us, and this is what farmers... When they own the land, they build this mm -hmm. so that when the government comes to knock it down, the more stories you have, the more compensation you have. That's why they shoddily build these. Perfect. Anyway. E no, this is a perfect example yeah. because this is the new area that they're building. Yeah, the is. exact okay. properties I'm talking about. How how okay. good that this footage came up. Yeah. So what Winston said is then they build those. You can explain nail houses yeah, a little more. Ver it's very straightforward. When you know the government's going to come and take that Which land. Which they are now. Yeah. What you do is you put as many additions on. It's about the height of the building because the government will pay you compensation per level of building. So they quickly construct these like multi-story nail houses, these crappy pieces of shit. That They're dangerous. Saw. They fall apart. Yeah. We saw, I stood yeah. on some of the roofs that collapsed. Remember yeah. they slid off the yeah, top? Yeah, exactly. You saw that in the background there. Yeah. Uh, so they build those so that when the government comes along, they're like, well, we've got a five-story building here, so you're going to have to give us like five times whatever. And then the government usually pays them out. So pittance anyway, but they pay them out. And then, yeah. So yeah, that's so, what was going so, yeah, on. So yeah, this is the new area that's costing. <laughs> Remember um, that guy in the house? He didn't know how old. He didn't even know how old. I just wanted to know, like, how old yeah. is this area? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah, because this building looked kind of old. We're like, how old I'm, is this building? I'm He's calling like, 1970s. I'm calling 1970s. So these aren't even that old. They look yeah. old, but see how crap they are. What they do is they put these up because they want when the land reclamation comes in, yeah, they want to yeah. get compensated. So yeah. anyway, this is very funny. This is literally, I'm not joking. This is the area I'm talking about. Okay, and so yeah, see how it's got tiles on the front facade, yeah. but then it's just concrete on the side right so they don't bother to to make no. it look nice because no one really looks at that part this shows you the fragility because what's what's happened is that mm. expensive area that i used to live nearby in mm -hmm. huizhou mm -hmm. that's that's cheap now <laughs> and now it's followed this new area where they're this mm. all this stuff will be bulldozed so how much are they already. paying for so, the, for their apartment out there right now this person that i know mm -hmm. is uh originally they were Originally, it should have been about two hundred thousand dollars for the apartment. Okay, right? all right, fair enough. Now, and that's a fair price. I, I can't. Not I mean, actually, no. Wages are about wages are about a thousand dollars a month. I mean, in China, that's cheap. And you see how it's changed my mind because yeah. two hundred thousand dollars is actually a lot of money. You could buy a big swath of land somewhere in like Oklahoma or something. You oh buy yeah, like a, a you can buy a really acres, nice house. You know, a really nice house yeah, with some yeah. land on it. Yeah, you could. Now, the thing is, you could even go to a decently developed place and buy a house. You mm. could buy a house, right? Sure. This is just a box. You could buy a double wide. You could buy a double wide. Easily buy a yeah, double, double wide. wide and, yeah, double wide. Yeah. They say NordVPN is cool. They say it's a great VPN. They say everybody does it. They say they're your friends. And they were right. This shit's awesome. Both Winston and I use a VPN every single day. And that's because it's kind of the nature of our work. I mean, for God's sakes, we have the Chinese government going after us. We have paid internet trolls trying to, you know, get our information, all that kind of stuff. But it's not just our circumstance that needs a VPN. It's pretty much everyone. A VPN is awesome because what it does is it encrypts your data and puts it in a tiny little package where no one can see what you're doing on the internet. So that keeps all of your data safe, make sure that nobody can see your identity, your credit card, and all that kind of good stuff. The VPN that we choose is NordVPN. NordVPN is awesome because it's super easy to use. You can hop around to different servers from all around the world and it makes sure that all your stuff is safe. Whenever you're on the internet, I recommend you use NordVPN every single time. Don't forget to go to nordvpn.com slash advchina what you'll get is a huge, massive discount on a two-year plan. But not only that, you're going to get four free additional months. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at here is we're talking about a city where the average salary is $1,000 a month. Yeah. Okay. Now, that same, in the third tier, no nobody city is six hundred grand. Really? It's gone up that Me much? Meanwhile, down the road, the property prices have collapsed. Yeah. So they're... It's the last dregs now. You can see before it was, you could invest anywhere and it sure. was going up. Absolutely. Right now, Winston and I, I think both can agree that it's now at its final path. It's basically, you can, you, you need to escape like the wave coming at you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because like just around the, the, the property that I was talking about that has dipped so much, hmm. that's only a couple hours away in the same province. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, 
getting dangerous right now. You have to now. understand as well, when people buy property, like you said, the guy bought the, the house, mm. I mean, the apartment, and now it's gone back to what he paid for yeah. it. Now, you'd think that's okay. No loss, no, no, no harm, no foul. In but China, no. No, not only that. The amount that you pay for your mortgage is insane. Yes. And that's the problem. It's money lost. Because when you own an apartment in China, if you're not living in it, which most speculators don't live in their apartments, they just buy them, leave them empty and wait to sell them again. You have to pay such a high mortgage, like 20,000 RMB a month or whatever it is on top of, you know, whatever. And you keep putting that money in there, but you're getting nothing back. So... You've lost because usually people they pay this high mortgage, but that's because they know they've got a big. They're yeah. getting a big payday, so they don't mind. But if you're not going to get a payday, that means you've just wasted all that money. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So what's the point of you buying it? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what's it's causing panic selling too. Mm. So these people that said, "Oh my gosh, it's gone down to what I paid for. I better just get rid of it and cut mm. my losses," because there's a good chance it could end up like what you're seeing on the screen <laughs> in the beginning, especially with these houses. That yeah. holy shit. Where are you going to get your return on their investment? There's not going to be any magical buyer that comes in and says, I'm going to move my family in here. It's no. rotted away and collapsed. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's ridiculous. So more personal example, I just want to get into what you are renting the whole time. Yes. And you've suffered the unbelievable uh, inconvenience of being kicked out all the time because yeah. of the speculative market. It was so the, the apartments would change hands almost every year. Right. You know, right. someone else would come in and they'd sell it, make the money, someone would buy it. Right. It's ridiculous. Right. So and one of the stipulations for getting married in China is you're supposed to have a house. Yes. Right. So I had to buy an apartment, mm. which I did in China. I think I paid like 150 grand. It wasn't anything outlandish. For the average person, that's that's quite yeah. expensive. Yeah. But it wasn't anything outlandish. And the idea was to buy something to live in, not something to speculate yes, on. Yes, yeah. Right. So there, it's funny. I talked to relatives who were in the industry and they were like, buy this area because this is more for living. It's less about like bad quality stuff that you're just investing in. Mm. And they knew the difference between an apartment that you buy to live in versus the apartment you buy to speculate on. They right. know you no, no, you never live in that area. That's sure. just to buy, just to speculate. Maybe a Hong Kong investor will come buy it from you. Yeah. It's there's distinctions amongst these apartments. Yeah. In my apartment it wasn't fancy or anything special. Oh, I have to point out in the background here you can see this was an apartment I moved into in, in one of the first ones in in China and it was a very fancy one when I moved in and when I moved in all those ponds were full, you know, it was very looked fantastic. They had a bunch of like gyms and internet cafes and stuff on this particular floor. They had a restaurant there. It was all really gone. yeah, and within I, I stayed there for I think three or four years. I lived in that apartment. It's the longest place I lived in a single, you know, it's the longest time. Everything went to shit. Look at it. Everything dried up. There was mold. Those escalators stopped working after the first six months this that is, I was living. I can mirror this exact. My parents-in-law, yeah. wasteland. They had this beautiful restaurants, so everywhere, fountains, swimming yeah. pool, all gone within. I months. mean, look inside the elevators. It yeah. was like cobwebs and disgusting. So, yeah, the I, paints I wanted to falling get... off and peeling off. This is what happened to my apartment. The living, the good living one yeah. ended up cracked walls. The elevator collapsed with a family inside of it. All the, mm. the cladding on the ceiling fell off. The yeah. lights fell down. Yeah. It was a wasteland. And you could see, and it woke me up. Oh, yeah. I want us to go through these prices sure. in a minute. But yeah, keep saying it. We'll, we'll get into this. So I just wanted to say that mm. it was very apparent very quickly that anything you buy, even with insider info about what you should buy and what you should avoid, ended up like shit yeah absolute shit mm. and this is what i wanted to bring full circle is it's very easy to see how evergrand happens yes like you might be able to watch videos online about uh, some speculators and some investment guys we're not experts on economics but what no. i can say is we saw what was happening and how it got so bad correct yeah absolutely now i just want to go back to that original apartment of mine this is actually downstairs and i filmed this when did i film this 2016 20, yeah. about 2016 so remember these prices are much higher now yeah i was so impressed when i first moved into that building okay it had marble floors and a big um sort of foyer lobby area that you walked in these fancy elevators it was like i felt proud to live there you know if you bring a a, a visitor over they're like wow this looks cool right this by the way downtown shenzhen right next to huajian bay it's the most um, fancy, expensive city in China, by the way. It's top, top, top tier. Okay, so it looked great. And it degraded so badly in the time I was there. When I left, it was just like a disgusting wasteland. The um, management that they had there, when, when I first moved in, 
you know, because during summer it's humid and the, the wallpaper would peel off the wall. You know, that happens yeah. in, in the southern cities. They would send a guy up who had exact matching wallpaper who would come and like cut out the section that was bad and paste it in. It was like part of, um, they had like a warranty basically on the apartment, you know. It all seemed really good. That lasted a year. Following year, they changed management or something. Called the guy up. They're like, no, sorry, we don't do that. We don't have that. You're going to have to find that yourself. Had to go try find matching wallpaper, which was impossible. Everything started to fall apart. The, the fancy restaurants, all that stuff completely closed down. They had gyms that people had bought memberships for like a year or whatever, just disappeared overnight. All that stuff went away. It started to get so bad that some of the elevators didn't work and you had to take stairs in some places. It was ridiculous. And this is right in the heart of Shenzhen. But even though it was so decrepit and run down by the time I'd moved out and when I went to go film this, because I filmed this after I'd moved out, they were still advertising the properties and I thought we could take a look and see. Yeah, so this one right here, that's 70 square meters. That's tiny. So okay. 70 square meters. Let me just do some math here. Um, yeah, I mean, here we've got a whole bunch, right? That are currently for sale. This for is Americans, 2016 on. prices, right? Yeah, so uh, so 700 square feet. So that's tiny. Yeah. That's absolutely tiny, right? Yeah. So in 2016, that mm -hmm. flat cost 600 grand for 700 square feet. Yeah, 600,000. So you got to keep in mind that that's probably quadrupled At now. least. So it's well over a million dollars for a tiny flat in a city where the average salary is like $1,500. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't stop there. You can see, like, how much is uh, 461? Okay. So or, fi fi yeah, 551 for a 80, uh, 89 square meter. Okay, so that's, again, that's only like, what, 89 square meters? Yeah. So this is fun to do. So this is about 950 square feet, tiny place, Yeah. tiny apartment. That's eight hundred and fifty three thousand dollars in twenty sixteen. So that's yeah. probably two or three million dollars. It's definitely dollars. it's it went up astronomically since here. Now they're, they're I, what I want more. people to keep in mind though, this isn't Manhattan. No. This is China. And number two, the biggest most important distinction here mm -hmm. is that this flat is gonna be garbage by it now. It is it is garbage. Yeah. Even at that time they were garbage. That's what I'm saying. I had moved out because the place was running down so badly. I was like what the hell am I paying my rent here for? Look, you can see there's an apartment for rent. 5,600 RMB a Which month. Which is so much cheaper than what you pay for a mortgage. Yes, but that's the whole point. That's still a very high rent, by the way. 800 bucks. Yeah. That's cheap it's, by Western standards. By Western standards, but not in China. No. When I moved in, I was paying 3,200 a month for my apartment, which is roughly the same size as the one there. bucks, yeah. It ended up going up to 4,000 uh, RMB a month, and that's when I moved out. Because it, it hit 4,000 RMB, and I was like, I'm not paying 4,000 RMB for this place. It's falling apart. You know, things aren't working properly. It's just the whole building is just a ticking time bomb. That's when I moved out. And then they were, uh, you know, renting for five, six. But if you're paying for a mortgage for one of these places, you're paying 20, 30,000 a month. So even if you do rent it out, it doesn't help you. You're not recouping. No, it doesn't. It's not like in the States when you buy a place, you can rent it out pretty much for your mortgage. Correct. You can do that. Yeah. It's possible, but not, not in China. So it's a crazy, crazy situation. So can you bring this all, tie this together? Like, it's pretty obvious how Evergrande happens. Yeah. But do you under, can you explain to everybody why, um, why it's gotten this bad and maybe what the end game is here? <clears throat> It's pretty simple. It is the only real investment engine in China. People tried to invest in things like stocks. The stock market crashed. People are now scared of the stock market. They refuse. It's also fixed as hell. Yeah, it's also crazy in China. It's, it's very controlled and weird and it's, you know, it's unpredictable. So the stock market's no good. They try to invest in peer-to-peer -peer lending. We all saw what happened with peer-to-peer -peer lending. That went out the window. Yep. Let's get us back up here. Um, that went completely out the window when the, the government decided they're going to put some controls in place. Half of, in fact, the majority of those peer-to-peer -peer lending schemes quickly shut down and ran away with everyone's money. People can't, people have tried investing in gold. That doesn't work out very well. So the only real investment that uh, the people in China have is real estate. That's also why they go to Canada and Australia and America and so on and buy real estate there, the richer people, because they know at least that belongs to them, you know? And they can get benefits by having that, yeah. you know? Whereas in China, it's only a lease. It's like a 70-year lease on the land that the property developer gets, not even you. So, for instance, my wife's property that she bought, she bought an apartment. The property developer took so long to build the buildings. By the time people could move into the buildings, there was only 48 years left on the lease. So she paid for 48 years of this apartment, which is not great, by the way. In fact, it's very, it's very shoddily it's, put together. Yeah. It almost... Uh, well, you know, the electrical box 
melted and fell apart you know like while i was there i was like what the hell's going on here anyway they blamed the shifu you know the little hardware store guy that comes and installs all the electrics and stuff they blamed him but whatever it's a crazy situation but like i said in the beginning of this video it's never gone down so people just cannot fathom that it's a bad investment idea and that's why they're willing to throw their entire family's fortune into these properties but it is going down yeah but it's got to the point now where it's catching up the debt's catching up because what what these big property developers do is they it all works on investor basically like a ponzi scheme the government takes a piece of land. They kick everybody off the land. Those nail houses are a good example. They pay compensation or they just forcibly remove people or whatever they do. They sell that land to a big property developer like Evergrande. Evergrande comes in and before they even build anything, they've already sold the apartments to these speculators, to these investors. They have a big sales event where they hire, you know, white monkeys to come play guitars and, you know, dress up like mermaids or whatever they do, some crazy stuff like that. And they bring people in like a big investment party and they usually sell out of the apartments within like an hour. Have you seen those crazy yes. things? And, and, you know, they have all these weird incentives like they'll offer a free chicken. And have you seen that yep. stuff, you know, or free water or something? And they bring all the IEs in and the families come in. a bottle of in. free water. You get, and you get a free live chicken. Yeah. There was, they did they that give, for one. They give chickens. Yeah, they give all they sorts of weird one, things. Yeah. yeah, there's tons of different incentives anyway. Um, and they get to a point where they're like, oh, we'll give you like uh, your first year of they'll defer the mortgage or they'll give you a 0% interest for the first however many years. There's all these incentives for people to buy. So these investors come in, they buy them up, they put their deposit down. So the Evergrande takes their deposit money and they use that money to then start building. So they've got the money before they even break ground, okay? But then they start to get greedy and they start taking investors' money and they think, hey, this seems to work really well. Let's open up a... a a football league or whatever and we get investors to pour money into that oh that worked too let's make a an ev company where we make uh, electric cars we got tons of investors will just give us money so they keep taking investors money and using their investor money to pay that person off pay that person off and keep this kind of ponzi scheme going but it's got to a point now where they cannot pay people back on time they've run out of cash flow because they're just spread too thin and they've wasted and floundered their money all over the place so you've got situations where contractors like for instance the people that paint the walls or the people who come to clean the apartments before they're sold type thing or you know whatever the case haven't been paid for months even years now and they're like we need our money or we cannot continue to work for you so what they're doing now is they're saying okay well we can't give you money but we can give you a parking space that doesn't exist yet, you know, because usually we sell them for what, 40,000, 50,000 mm. RMB, how much is it? No, 40,000 US dollars. Yeah, 200, Sorry, 200, yeah, I remember it was ridiculous. I was like, minus the, 250. I the think. parking spot costs more than your car, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, well, more. It's ridiculous. My car is 10 grand. It's ridiculous, yeah. right? So then they will say, look, we'll give you X amount of parking spots in a building that doesn't exist in a place where you don't live, you know, as payment. And the contractors are like, well, if you're going to give us that, you better give it to us as a huge discount. So give us 20 of them instead of 10 type thing. So it's really getting the value of their, their stuff down. They're liquidating. Yeah, they're yeah actually, that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're getting rid of their assets and assets that don't exist yet. Right. So it's kind of like writing all these big IOUs to that's try and keep it, it going. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. And that's why they've reached this point because mm -hmm. they've just been very unwise and their Ponzi scheme's falling apart. And this is indicative of something that will happen, probably like a slow burn because the Chinese government has no option but to step in and try to stop this fire, wildfire yeah. from spreading, because the only thing that they that hinges on their uh, that their stability is that they can actually promise people money. Yeah, and if that dries up, then the CCP is in big trouble. Yeah, so they're going to come in. They're going to get the banks to bail these guys out, extend loans, whatever the case. Maybe give them or even pay off their loans or whatever the case. But they'll it's keep going. It's going to hurt the Chinese economy. But though. yes, it's a big wake-up call. And I think we might see a little bit of a cooling effect now yes. on the property market, which it's, it's way overdue. Way overdue. Way, way overdue. So let's hope uh, not too many people lose out. But at the same time, this craziness has to stop. Yes. You know? For sure. Cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, some of our experiences. We'll be talking about this more. We actually have a fantastic... A lot of footage from a big ghost city with mm. a big ring of life yeah, in it. Yeah, we'll cover that next time, maybe. Yeah, we'll uh, make a video about that because we're going to show you. Got chased out by the Chinese PLA. Yeah, we did. And uh, we've got a lot of footage of the place. It's actually quite fascinating. So yeah. we'll, we'll show you guys that uh, soon. Yeah. Anyway, until next time, you know the drill. Thank you for watching ADV China. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Stay awesome.